everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, it's me, Tim Shields. Uh, thanks again for joining us this uh, beautiful day. It's a little cooler than it's been, but I'm I'm ready for it. I think most of us are ready for fall. So uh, that usually means we're staying in. We're getting ready for, you know, Christmas, Halloween, doing all that great sewing and, and inside stuff. Um, but I just want to say hey, a couple things. Uh, we had the Des Moines Quilt Show last weekend. Um, I really appreciate all of you that, that, that stopped by the booth to say, hey, uh, we had a really great time. Uh, good turnout. They're going to do it again next year. So I look forward to seeing a lot of you there. I'm, I'm hoping they're going to invite us back. I think they will. Um, but again, uh, that was that was a good time. And I haven't been here for a little while just because it's uh, been a little little crazy around here at times. But um, but uh, today, I think Jan's going to talk about one of the new products that both Brother and Baby Lock came out with. It, uh, they kind of revamped their five by seven uh, embroidery sewing combo machine. Um, the Baby Lock is the Baby Lock Bloom and the uh, brother is the Baby Lock uh, 2850D. Um, so really nice changes they made with it. Uh, some wireless stuff. Uh, Jan's going to go over that with you. So um, stay tuned. We do. We are starting to get more stuff in stock. Same with our upgrades. So again, appreciate your patience. Uh, appreciate you uh, giving us uh, great shout outs to comments and, and liking our, our posts and our and our page. And we, I know we've gotten some new people from the Quilt Show, so welcome if, if you're from the uh, Quilt Show. Uh, we look forward to doing this every week and, and seeing more of you. So, again, thanks for joining us, and I will turn it over to Jan. Catch you later. Hi, everybody. So, happy Wednesday. Just a second here. I'll turn off the banner. Give me a second here. Bring up the comments so I can see who's here. Hello, everybody. Okay, so... The, the 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 machines the new stuff is starting to come in so we're slowly getting some st stuff in um we still haven't gotten all the upgrades and hoops and stuff for the luminaire but we are getting a couple of the new machines so i thought i would show you the new um small one of the new smaller machines that they redid the five by seven machine and the little four by four machine and they added a couple of really nice features to it. And it makes a really great, you know, if you have a bigger embroidery machine, this would be a great machine to carry around with you. Has a big enough hoop. You know, it's only five by seven, but it has a big enough hoop that you can, um, you know, you can do a lot in a five by seven hoop. Um, and so I just thought I'd show you a little bit about the machine. So the one that came in first was the baby lock and it's called the bloom. And the bloom, um, the Bloom and then the brother version of it is called the NS2850D. And there's one extra thing that that, that, that machine will ha have that the Bloom doesn't. And I'll talk about that at the end because it just launched yesterday. So that so several of you will have the ability to use this um, product. It's called Art Spira. We'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Um, but it, it just launched yesterday. So I haven't even had a chance to see it yet because I was up trying to upgrade all the machines and everything to do it. So anyway, so let's talk about the bloom. Give me a second here. I'm going to switch my camera down to the machine. Oh, golly. I have to get the right, the right button, though. Here we go. So we'll do the camera and the microphone. Okay, so this is the Baby Lock Bloom. Again, this is a smaller machine. So this one is, um, they redid it a few years ago to add some really important things to it, like the color screen, for instance. They added the ability to do some editing on the screen. So we're gonna talk a little bit about it as an embroidery machine first, and then I will remove the embroidery unit because it, this one is also a sewing machine. So I'll do that um, in a few minutes, but I wanted to show you a little bit about the embroidery. So um, like I said, a few years ago, they redid this machine to add a couple of things. And I'm gonna show you those things first, and then I wanna show you the new things they just added to it. So one of the things they added was the color touchscreen. So it is really nice to have a color screen. The older version of this had a black and white screen. Um, so I can go in and I can choose a design. So let's just choose one of the little designs here. Let's get the little bunny and I can set him. So one of the things that was added to it a few years ago was the ability to add. So in other words, I can go in and I can click the add button now and I can go back and I can add lettering then. 
before when I did this, when I had this machine, I was not able to do more than one thing at a time. I just had to do the design and then go back and do the letters separately. But this one's nice because I have more editing abilities right on the screen. So I can move my, my words around, I can move my little design around, and you can see I can touch the screen with my finger and, and um, move the designs around. So that was something they added a few years ago, which I really thought was great. The other thing they added was the ability to work with the lettering a little bit. The older machine did not have the ability to do anything except straight letters. Now this one, I have font edit here, and I have the ability to array them. In other words, I can curve the letters up and down. I can do like the stair step effect this way. I can um, adjust the, the curvature this way and I can change how curved it is, okay? So that was something that they added a while ago. And that's made this machine really nice, you know, cause it had some of the things that it never had before. The other thing I can do is I can go in in this area, the letter editing, editing area, and I can go in and I can touch this button and then I can adjust my um, font. So like if I want my font to be this new exclusive font that they have, I can do it that way. Or I can go in and change my font in here instead of having to go all the way back to the beginning um, like I used to have to do with this particular, you know, series of machine. So I really thought that was cool. They did that a few years ago. I love that. I can do some adjustments with individual letters also. So they put some of the abilities of the little bit larger machine, the next one up, um, into these, these two smaller machines, which is nice. Cause there's a four by four and then there's this five by seven machine. So I was really happy when they did that. And it was so neat because, you know, it just made the machine a little more versatile. You could do more with it. And um, you could do multiple designs at the same time. Well, so the other thing now that they have done, so they're, they've done a couple of really neat, even more new things with the machine. I love the fact that they put in the new machine, this Bloom. Okay, so this is the new one. And then the brother is the 2850D. So the one thing I wrote them down here at the bottom, the big thing for me, these were the three big things. They put in wireless design transfer. So I can, I can now send designs from my computer. And I think I showed this to you with the Luminaire and with the 3700D. I can also now use, use that with the Bloom and the 2850D. So that wireless transfer program is called Design Database Transfer. It is a free uh, design, is a free uh, program, and you can get it on. Um, I have all the links up on our Facebook page. You'd have to scroll down a little bit, but all the links are for are up there for the programs and the videos that I did on uh, a while ago on how to use the program. So it's a very cool program, but I am gonna show you a little bit about how to set it up. Cause this is one of the new things that I thought was really cool. So the wireless feature is new in the Bloom. So I'm gonna show you how to set up the wireless feature on the machine. And then you have to set up, I'll share my screen and then I'll show you how to set it up in the software, okay? So this, this, um, this machine has a settings page. So I'm going to hit the little settings page and we're going to set this up so that it's on my wireless router. So it's the first step. And if you have some of the other wireless machines like the Luminaire, the Stellar, the 1055, the, um, the PRs also have this feature. This is the first step of getting it set up in order to use the wireless transfer program. OK, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to find the information about the I'm really close there. So on this one here, it is it's on page nine, it says nine. And what I have to, the first thing I have to do is I have to turn my wireless LAN enable. I need to turn on my wireless card in the machine. So I have it turned on. And then the next step is this little wireless LAN setup wizard. So this is, it's just like setting up like a printer or something else on your Wi-Fi at home. You just click the little wireless LAN setup wizard. 
Okay. And then it's going to search for everything that's available to it. Takes a little bit because our internet's a little slow here. So it'll take, it'll search for a minute. Okay. And then it'll give you all the, the uh, wireless routers that are available to you. And this one, and the one that I'm on is the Shield Sewing. Okay. So I would touch that. And then this one has already been set up. So what it does when you, when you, it'll ask you for your network password. Okay. And then you just type that in and click OK and apply. And it will be on the internet. So this one's already done. So I'm just going to back out of this because I've already done this one. OK. And then I'm going to click OK. So I've got my wireless card turned on. I did my little wizard to get it hooked up to my, my Wi-Fi. And I'm just going to click OK. So now it's all ready for the design transfer. OK. So I'm going to go back a couple of screens here so it's back to the main screen and you can see here that that this is the little wireless symbol and if it's blue that means that it is active and then that's on the internet so if i click on that it's going to take me to those wireless um, pages that i was on earlier and if i want to go to the next page this page here is nice because it allows you to change the name of the machine and I like to change the name of the machine to the model that it is so that I can tell my machines apart really easily. So this one, I just named it Bloom. And you just hit the change button and you type in the name you want. So it's very easy. Okay, so that's one of the things. Now, the other thing it will allow you to do on this machine is there's a little thing that says check for updates. You can hit the little check button and it's gonna say check, it's, it's gonna say wait a while. And then it's going to say, in this case, the latest version is um, is already installed because I did do an update. There was an update for this yesterday. So I went ahead and did that update. It does not automatically download the update to the machine. It just tells you that there is one and you still have to manually update this machine with a USB stick. OK, so it just is going to tell you that there is one so you can check it on the machine. And that is very handy because at least you know that there is one and then you just have to go download it. All right. So that's the little Internet stuff. We got it hooked up to our wireless router. I'm going to click OK. I've got my little wireless symbol here and it's blue. So we know that it's hooked up. OK. So if you give me a second, I'm going to go ahead and change. I'm going to go ahead because there's the second step of this to get it hooked up to our little program, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. Give me just a second. Gotta hit the right buttons here. All right. So in here in a second, you should be able to see my screen. If you give me just a moment, I'm just gonna grab my phone here so I can see the comments. Because the comments, um, sometimes it's hard for me to see them when I'm sharing my screen. So let me just grab my phone here, get onto the right Facebook page. Maybe I usually do this in advance and I forgot today. And of course I was going to share, so I needed to, all right, there we go. Let's see if I can find myself here. All right. Whoops. There we are. Turn my, turn my sound down. All right. OK, so now I can see if you're saying anything. I just don't want to miss any comment questions if I had any. All right, so I have my screen up here. And the little program, there's two programs. And again, these are the, the links to these. I will, um, after the class today, I will go and bump those up the, the feed a little bit so that they're not so far down for you to find them easier. Because I put the links to both of the programs. So. If you have the Baby Lock Bloom or a Baby Lock machine, you need to have the Baby Lock Design Database Transfer. Okay. And if you have a Brother machine, you need to have the Brother Database Transfer. It's the same program, but they are specific to the brand. So you, there are two different programs. So I have both of them on my, my computer here because I have Baby Locks in the store and I have Brothers. So for this one, for the Bloom, we need the Baby Lock version. So I'm going to click the Baby Lock version. I'm going to open up the little program. 
And this is a really cool little program. If some of you have PE design, it looks sort of like design database, trans design database is what it's called. Um, and, it, and it's a cataloging program. And you can also use this for that. Um, I'm just gonna show you the transfer today, but the, um, the uh, cataloging section of the program is very cool. And I, and those videos that I will, like I said, I'll bump that up the feed a little bit so you can find it a little easier, the links to them on YouTube. I did two videos on this program that are more specific and it will show you some of the stuff. Um, so it shows you some of the cataloging properties of it. And it's just a really cool little program and it's free. So, and if you have the full version of PE Design, like 11, this is going to look very similar to Design Database. And you can also do the wireless transfer through that. So, you, but I like the free one because there's no security device. You know, there's no USB or dongle that you have to have hooked up to your computer. So I can just open up this little program real quick and then I can send my designs to my machine and it's so cool. So it just, I don't have to go grab the dongle every time I wanna do this. So I normally use the free one. I actually really like it. And yeah, I can do some of the cataloging that way too. Okay, so here's our little program. So this is the second step. I've got my baby lock design database transfer open because we're gonna set up our bloom. So what I do, what I wanna do is I'm gonna click to get my machine hooked up so that it'll talk to my computer. The computer needs to be on the same wireless network as the machine, which it is, okay? And then there's a little icon that looks like a sewing machine up here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that little icon and I'm going to click the word add and it's gonna search for the machines. And it says searching and it'll search for a, mo a moment. And I don't have any other baby locks turned on right now that would be, you know, um, actually uh, compatible with this. So it says the baby lock bloom. Okay. So you're going to click on that word and then you're going to click add again. And then it adds the baby lock bloom to your right list. And then you click okay. So now we have it all set up. You just click a couple of buttons. You search for your machine. You click this, you click okay and you're done. That's that's all there is to, to setting this up. It's very easy. And now when I go over here to my writing boxes, the top part of this is going to be like my navigation pane. So let's say I wanna go find some designs. So I know I have designs in my documents. So here's my, I have my documents opened and I have um, a bunch of in a bunch of embroidery designs. So I'm going to go into a need a good design because I know there's a whole bunch of designs in here. Now this machine is relatively small. So we do need to make sure that we have um, a design that is only five by seven. So it cannot be any bigger than five by seven because it won't go to the machine. So I'm going to click on African Safari and the box, the little folder that says Baby Lock Brother, and that's gonna bring up all of my designs here. So I need a good design has an A, B, C, and D um, design. The Ds are gonna be the small ones that are five by seven, just so you know. Cs are gonna be six by 10 usually. So if I tried to do a C design, so let's just pick a C to see what it says. So if I picked a C design, I click on it and I use the little arrow to put it down into the writing box at the bottom. If I try to send that to my bloom, which is the, I send to, you wanna choose the design or the machine that you're sending to and I'm using the bloom, okay? If I click that and I go down here and click the little transfer button, it's gonna come up probably and tell me there's an error saying some data is larger than the maximum sewing area of the selected machine. So that one would not go to my machine because it's too, it's too big. So if you get that error message, you're got, you've got too big of a design. Okay, so let's try the D because I know that one's the smaller one. So let's get rid of this one down here. I'm just gonna hit the little trash can and then I'm gonna click the D, this lion, and put it down into the writing box at the bottom. Okay, and then I'm just gonna click the little transfer button now. And it looks like a little sewing machine down there. So I'm just gonna click that. 
and I'm going to wait. It says wait for a while. And then it's going to say finished outputting data. So we got it there. OK, so I didn't have to use a USB stick. Of course, there's still a USB stick there. So if you want to use a USB to put designs to this machine, you can do that. OK, but the this this is a very handy way if you've got you've got some a couple of quick things you want to do and like, oh, shoot, where's my USB stick? I can't find it. Well, this way I don't need to use it. All right, so I'm going to click OK. I'm going to close the little program. And then I'm going to show you, uh, we'll stop sharing my screen here just a second. And I'm going to go back up here to my machine. OK. And so what's cool now, I'm going to go find the, the design. We transferred it wirelessly and now it's on the machine here. OK. So I'm going to go in here to the pocket, which is where the USB and any other transfer method would be. So I'm just going to click the little pocket. And there's three ways that I can find designs. The first icon is I may have saved something in the machine already. And that's where I would find it. The second icon would be my USB stick. So if I have the designs on my USB over here in the, the, the slots right here, you can see where my finger is there, um, then I would choose that one. But in this case, we sent it wirelessly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this little button. And there's my design. There's my little, there's my little lion. So I, and this was actually an applique. So I can touch him and I can hit set. And I can hit edit end and embroidery. So now he's ready to be sewn. Okay. So again, the largest hoop for this machine is, is five by seven. Um, but there is shortly, it's not available yet. The one, the other thing that they added, I forgot to write that on my little list here is they are going to have a five by seven magnetic frame for this machine. So the magnetic frame is really neat and that, but it's just not quite available yet. I haven't gotten any of the brothers or baby locks yet. So they will be available soon. And this machine, this machine will have a five, uh, magnetic five by seven hoop available for it. Okay. So I thought that was really cool that they made a new magnetic hoop for this machine. All right. So there's our design. Okay. And if I want to sew that design out, I'm ready to sew at this point. This is an applique. So we're just going to do some letters today, but I wanted to show you a little bit. So this is an applique. Now, the one thing about this machine, just so you know, is if you transfer items to the machine wirelessly, it doesn't automatically save them to the machine. It, it won't stay there. You have to save them with the memory. There's a little memory button right here. It looks like a little pocket. So if I want this to be in my machine permanently, I have to hit this button and save it in the machine. On the wireless function, it only um, saves it until the machine is turned off. Some of the machines are like that. This one, when it, it gave me the error yesterday. As soon as you turn the machine off, that this design is going to be gone. Okay. So unless they've changed it with this new update that I put in yesterday. So I don't, I'll, I'll check it when I, let's turn it off and see. Because <laughs> I didn't get the error this time. But I just did the update to the machine yesterday. So let's see if it actually comes up. So I just turned it off. <laughs> It's got to do its gyrations here. Okay, so let's see if the if, if the design is still there or if it's gone. Because that's what they told me yesterday. So just a second here. It's thinking. It has my little a wireless thing hasn't come back on yet. Okay, there it comes. All right, so let's go back and then we'll let's check and see if our design's still there. So see it's gone. That design that we brought in with the lion is gone. So this one, it doesn't save it in the machine like the Luminaire. And, and I know the Stellaire does and the Luminaire does and the 1055 does because um, I can save a new, a, several uh, designs that I've transferred wirelessly right in the machine. This one does not save in the machine. Okay, so when you turn the machine off, the design's gone. All right, so we know how to send it wirelessly. That's one of the really cool features. The second really cool feature that they added to this machine, I never dreamt that they would have a machine that had a five by seven hoop that had a jump clipper on it. 
And most, a lot of you know what a jump clipper is. The jump clipper means that if there's red here, red here, and red here, previously this machine would sew the red, and then it would leave a line of thread, and then sew the red over here, and then it would leave a line of thread and sew the red over here, okay? So then we had to take our scissors and we had to clip it in between. And you had to be careful to clip regularly so that the foot didn't catch on those long lines of thread. Well, guess what? They put the jump clipper in this machine. It is so cool. So we're gonna watch the jump clipper. I wanted to show everybody the jump clipper and we can do that. Now these are still, they haven't changed the hoops. So these still have the little clamp hoops in it. So these are still the, the traditional hoops that they've had for this machine for some time. So they have the little, you can see that there's no little thing that slides in. So this one pops on. You can see the little thing over here. And I'm just gonna slide that over those two little ends and I'm gonna clip it down, okay? And then to remove it, there's this little, this little latch and I just pull back on my thumb and kind of, you have to kind of wiggle it. And when they're new, they're a little tight. So I kind of pull back and I wiggle it back and forth, side to side. And this one's really tight, this one's new, okay? So these are a little bit harder to get out, but once you get, once they get um, used a few times, it's not so hard. All right, so I'm gonna slip this in. All right, so now I wanna show you the other big thing about this new machine is the jump clipper. So I was so surprised when they put a jump clipper on it. Okay, so let's just bring up some letters. I'm just gonna go get some letters. And I'm just gonna type my name, okay? Now, the other thing that they've added to this machine in the last update upgrade to it was they added the ability to do multiple line um, text. So I can touch this little button right here that looks like an arrow and I can drop down. If I touch it, it'll say two here and that'll be the second line of text. I think that's so neat because then I can, I can do um, two lines of text at once. And you didn't used to be able to do that either. You could only do one thing at a time, so. All right, so let's just type my name. It's short. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit set. And at one of, and what I wanna do is I want you to see the jump clipper work. So I'm gonna go ahead and font edit because we talked a little bit about this before. And one of the things that's cool is it has the ability now to adjust the distance between the letters. So I'm gonna touch that. And that was in the last upgrade, but it was something that was a huge thing. So I'm gonna make the letters a little further apart. I'm just gonna to touch this with arrows pointing out, make the letters a little further apart so that the jump clipper will work, okay? So I'm gonna click okay and okay one more time. And then we're gonna edit end. This is also on the editing screen here where we could click, we could move it around on the screen. So if we wanna move it up out of the center, if we wanna resize it, we can make it bigger or smaller here by about 20%. We could rotate it, we can change the colors, we can change the density of the letters here. So there's a lot of things right here that you can you can do to change things. So I'm gonna edit end. And at this point, I'm just gonna click embroidery, okay? So I've got my name and this is the jump clipper. So I mean, a lot of you have seen this, some of you have not. So I just want you to see that this machine now has, still, it does not have an automated foot though. So you do have to put the little presser lever down if I can get a hold of it, there we go. And now my light's green and I can sew out my name. And in between the letters, it's gonna clip those jump clips. And that was like a huge thing when this came out years ago when we got our first machines with the jump clippers. Oh my gosh, it was just like wonderful. I remember getting my first machine with a jump clipper and I just sat and watched it because it was so cool how it would clip the clips in between and I didn't have to sit there with my scissors. And I still have an older machine that does not have that feature. And so I have to remember if I'm sewing on it, to, I have to kind of watch because you don't want your foot to get stuck in those, those long threads. So, all right, so we're getting about done with the first letter here. And then it will do our jump clip for us. It's a nice size machine for carrying. This is not a real super big machine. So it's not real heavy, very nice sewing machine. So we'll switch it over to sewing here in a minute. So you can see the sewing features and it's very much like most of the other machines that I've shown before. So the sewing is very nice. Okay, so it just cut. 
it's going to back up. It's going to go forward and back up to where and see how it cut that jump. And there's no jump in between the letters. Then. So that's like a huge thing. This is a wonderful little machine, and it's not a super expensive machine, and it has a jump button on it. So I've I've been real I was real pleased when I heard them say that, and the wireless was just you know that's one of the things that I just love. So is the wireless feature on it, so we can see it do it do the little jump clip one more time. But this one I've got the um, regular embroidery bobbin thread in, so I've got regular number sixty bob embroidery bobbin thread, and I've got some brother brother thread laying up here on the spool pin. And you notice that I've got it laying with the big end towards the away from the, the needle, and I have no cap on this. And, and if you're if you're laying your threads down, don't put caps on the ends and lay them down like this. It's technically backwards, but this is the way they work really well on the machines laying down. The brother educators have been helping us with that. So. So then we got our almost got the A, and then it'll do the jump again. But it's it's a little different type of jump clipper. A lot of our machines have the little the little thing that comes up and flips the tail out of the way, and this one just kind of goes forward and backward. So it has a little bit different kind of jump clipper, but it's still the same same function. It just doesn't it doesn't have the little flipper on the foot. So it's going to cut it off. It's going to come forward, and then go back. And start the next letter. So see, there's no let, there's no jump in between. So that that was a big wow with this machine. I was real glad they added that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let it finish the name here, and then I'll show you one more thing that is really cool that they added. And I love that this feature because there's actually some of the bigger machines that don't have this feature, but they added it to this one. So, but this is a good little machine. You see, it's pretty quiet, and it uh, it doesn't run. This one run doesn't run terribly fast. This one, the fastest speed is 650 stitches per minute, which is not terrible, but it's not as fast as some of the machines. But it still runs pretty well, and it has the five by seven hoop. So there's a lot you can do in a five by seven hoop. I do. I use a five by seven a lot. Especially for like Kimberbell projects, I do a lot of Kimberbell. So five by seven, um, they use five by sevens a lot in theirs. But I just love the jump clipper because otherwise there would have been lines between these letters, and I would have had to sit there with my scissors and clip them off. Okay. I figured you'd at least like to see it sew a little bit. We can just do some basic sewing, and then I'll do a little sewing too. going to go down the other end and then it'll cut the thread off at the end. This one has the nice automated needle threader on it just like most of the other machines. Has the two buttons here in the, for the sewing end that this is, ties the knot in place and this one physically reverses so when I'm so doing regular sewing I really like the this button that lets me just tie a knot in place. There we go and it's going to cut the thread at the end. Woohoo! There we go, and it's gonna go. It goes forward and back. So instead of having the little flipper, it kind of does this front back motion for this jump clipper. So that's one of the big things that I love. Okay. Now the other thing was the color sort. So let's say I'm gonna hit the back button to get back to the beginning screen. Let's say that I have. Um, some designs here. Um, let's say I want, um, oh, this is cute. This is a little B. It might be kind of big though. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big design. Let me go back and find some smaller ones. Okay, here's a small one. Okay, so here's a little, a little design that has um, a shamrocks on it and there's several colors in it and I'm going to set it and then I want to add and I'm going to go back and get another one of those designs. So I can have, I'm gonna set that one. We're gonna move it so I can see two. And then let's go add again and go back and get another one of those designs. So then I could do several in the hoop at the same time. And this is one of the things I love. So I'm gonna hit the move button. Let's move this one up. Okay, so we got our three little shamrock designs on there, okay? 
So the way right now, what's going to happen is that the machine will sew out the first shamrock design that we did in the center, and then it'll do the one at the bottom, and then it'll do the one at the top. Unless you have this cool new button that they put on here, and it's on a lot of the other machines, but they have a button called Color Sort. And it's right here on the editing screen, right before you hit embroidery. It's right here, and it, ha it has two blue spools and a red spool. So if I click this and make it blue, and then click embroidery, what it's going to do is it took all of the first color from all three designs and put them at the beginning. And then it took all of the second color and put them at the beginning and so on and so forth. And that is something that is really nice because then you don't have to change your threads and change your threads and change your threads. So I really like that feature. If I go forward a little bit, you can see some of the other colors here. I'm just gonna go down through some of the colors so you can see. Okay, so here's some of the other colors and see how it's grouped the, the kind of medium, the yellow, and then there's kind of a darker green here and they're all gonna sew, all the darker greens will sew at the same time. So all the lighter yellowish green and then the darker green and so on. So that way you don't have to go through and either jump forward and back, which I used to do. You know, I'd go do all of the first steps on all the designs so I wouldn't have to change the thread. Then back up and get to the second, second step of each design and like forward and backward. So I didn't have to change the thread so much. But this way with that one button that I pressed right here, it does it automatically for you. So that's the other thing in this new machine that is really awesome is that they gave you the color sort. Okay, so that's the three things that I really wanted to show you with the embroidery. I wanted to show you the wireless transfer. I wanted to show you the jump clipper. And I love that, um, that color sort feature. Okay, so that's, that's something that I, I really like on all the machines. And um, there's even like even the dream machines and the destinies don't have that color sort button on them. So <laughs> some of them do, but a lot of the, the newer ones do, but the, the, some of the older machines don't have that color sort on it. So that is a really neat button to have. So I don't think the D dream machines had that. I think that's one of the things that they didn't put on um, the dream machine. They didn't put it in the upgrade. It was it was in the luminaire but I don't think they ever put it in the Dream Machines and Destinies. So, but they have it in this one. And it's also in the little, I think it's even in the little machine. There's a little four by four machine too. Okay, so now let me show you a little bit about, let's just show you the sewing a little bit because this is a very nice sewing machine. And in order to remove my embroidery unit, I'm gonna take the hoop out. Okay, we'll take the hoop out first. And then anytime you remove or put on the embroidery unit, you want to make sure the machine is turned off. So I'm going to turn the machine off. And then I can reach over here. Let me turn the camera just a little bit. There's a little, right underneath the end of the embroidery unit, there's a little clip. And you just pull in and it pops off, okay? Like that. And I didn't bring the other little free arm back, so we, we won't use that right now. And then I'm going to turn the machine back on. Now the machine knows that it's a sewing machine. So it's gonna come up with a different screen, okay? Cause it was, I had that, all those embroidery things. So I'm just gonna touch this button and now it knows it's a sewing machine. So this is gonna look very familiar to many of you when it comes to the sewing features of the machines, okay? So this is a really nice sewing machine. I didn't bring all the feedback, so we probably won't sew, but I wanted to show you how to take the embroidery unit off and turn it off and then these screens are the basic sewing features, the, the basic sewing stitches. This button here will take me to all of the sewing stitches. So if I touch the first one down here, right below the back arrow, it will take me to the screen where all the different sewing stitches are. So like this machine has quite a lot of different stitches, has quite a few decorative stitches. This machine will sew sideways, which is a very nice feature. So this is a nice sewing machine. Um, it has some let, some small sewn fonts on it as well, and some nice decorative stitches. So to get to your, like here's the decorative stitches I chose, and to get to different pages, you just touch the little arrows and it tells you what page you're on over here. To get back to the previous thing you're at, just hit the back button, okay? And then you can go into a different category and you can go to the different pages. This one has four pages of different different stitches and I can choose the one I want. 
It tells me what foot to put on the machine, sets up my length and width for me up here at the top. And then if I want to change that, I can touch this little button right here and it will let me get into those numbers to change the width or change the length, okay? So that is the basic sewing screens for this machine. Um, I, I really like the machines because they also still have a little, a little menu up here that correlates to the buttons down on the screen. So here's the little menus for all the different stitches and it shows you a little picture of all of them. And then you can go down here and choose the button that correlates to the one up on the lid, okay? So that's how you get into the different sewing stitches. If you're going to be going back to embroidery then, I'm gonna click this off. Remember the machine has to be off for the embroidery one. Now you do have to remove the embroidery unit on this machine in order to sew with it. So that's why I had to take it off because it won't sew um, with the embroidery unit on. Some of the machines will, but this one won't, okay? So now when I bring it back on, it knows it's an embroidery machine. So it comes up with the embroidery features. Now I can push this button and the button does not operate when the embroidery unit is attached. So it reminds you that you gotta take it off in order to sew. This is our embroidery main screen. The exclusives on the Baby Lock mean that Baby Lock has their own exclusive designs that are only in the Baby Lock machines. The Brother machine, which is the 2850D, is going to have Disney. So their exclusive designs are going to actually be Disney designs. Many of these designs that are in the second category here are actually shared between the two brands of machines. And then many of the lettering fonts and that type of thing will be as well. So like this one with the lettering font, you notice that there's there says exclusive script. There is actually one font that only the baby locks have, the brother machines don't, okay? So then most of the other ones are the same. There's quite a few um, lettering fonts on this machine now. They finally put some Japanese fonts on it. Since it's a Japanese machine, you'd think maybe they put Japanese fonts and they finally did. So those are on there, okay? And then these little frames and stuff, both, both brands of machines will have that. And um, the front is gonna look very much like most of the other machines that you, that you may already have or have we've talked about. Start, stop button, okay? Again, this is your reverse when you're in sewing mode. You're gonna, this physically goes backwards when you touch this machine, this button. This button just ties the knot in place when you touch it. Needle up and down, here's your cutter. And then this is the speed control. When you're sewing, this is your speed control. This does not affect the speed when you're embroidering. That is preset. But this is for the, the quilt or the uh, sewing mode, okay? Right here. So that the front, the front stuff is basically the same. And the threading is going to be the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread the machine. One, two, everything's numbered. Three is straight down. Four is up and over the little lifter thing that's right here. So if you just just kind of slide it over from the right to the left and down and go straight down for five. Six is the little the little guide above the needle. I think I got it in there, there we go. You probably can't see it on the screen very well. And then I'm gonna go across the notch to number seven. So this is gonna be almost exactly like all the other machines. And this one does have the little button you have to press it. It doesn't have an automated button over here. So this one I have to press down till it clicks to thread the machine, okay? So that's very much the same. Your bobbin winder at the top is going to be the same as most of the other bobbin winders. And we've gone through some of those. This is the same as a lot of the machines, okay? And then you put your bobbin in, of course, down here. I've got embroidery bobbin thread in it. And this one, you're gonna make the letter P just like all the other machines. Tip it over to the right, okay? Lay it in and then follow the little arrow all the way around and there's a little tension unit right underneath this little piece right here and up and over and then cut it off. And that's putting your bobbin in correctly. Okay, so that's sort of some of the little basic stuff. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is that on the brother machine, and, and I just got brother machines in. So I also have the brother machines in stock um, in the same model. And that one's called, again, the 2850D. 
The one thing that it also has available to it that the baby lock does not is brother has a brand new app called Art Spira and it just launched yesterday. I haven't even had a chance to look at it yet because I had to upgrade all the machines and everything. Um, so that Art Spira app is going to be like, a, um, you can download designs directly from like a phone or a tablet and you can send them to your machine. And then they also will communicate with your scanning cuts. And so you can send things back and forth between machines and the cutting machines, which I think sounds very interesting. So I'm, I'm really um, excited to get to see it. Um, it says here, draw line, line art inspired designs up to the five by seven and then view, view them in the, the little stitch simulator on the app and then you can send it to the machine. And then you can use, um, it, it'll also work with the scan and cut. So I'm anx anxious to see the app like I said, it just launched yesterday. So the Baby Lock Bloom does not have that app, but the Brother um, 2850D does. So there's that. that's the other added thing. The Brother machine has all the things we talked about, the wireless transfer system, the jump clipper, and the color sort, but then it also has this Art Spira app. So I'm anxious to see that and see what it does because it's going to be really cool, I think. So, okay. So that's sort of, a, in a nutshell, a few of the cool new things with this machine. Some of you have, may have seen this or have a machine similar to it. Um, so I just wanted to show you some of the new stuff that that was that came out with this this particular model. Um, and we just got these in. So um, like I said, the ba the brothers just came in yesterday. I think they came in yesterday or day before. And I got the bloom maybe a couple weeks ago. I've only had this one a couple weeks. So. Um, but they, but everything's sort of starting to come in. We're starting to get the upgrades. We're starting to get some hoops. There's, we're still waiting on some. So some of you are still waiting, I know. Um, and so we'll hopefully be able to see some of the, the other new machines soon. I think there's a new smaller machine, the little four by four machine that hasn't come in yet. So we haven't seen that one yet. So there we're slowly, but surely getting them, getting them in. So, all right. So I, th I don't know if Tim wants to come back and are you coming back, Tim? Not sure where he went. <laughs> I was going to see if he wanted to come back and say goodbye to everybody. Let me see if I can find him. All right. Are you going to come back and say goodbye? Goodbye. goodbye. He says goodbye. Aren't you going to come back so they can see you? Just a minute. Let me let me get you a microphone. Okay. There we go. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Um, as always, appreciate you, uh, you know, saying kind words and uh, liking and sharing. Uh, that always helps us out. We've been extremely busy, and I, and I, I do uh, thank you, all of you, for helping us with that. I think uh, you guys give us really kind, say kind words about us, and then we continue to try to help you out. Um, but as always, if you need anything, don't hesitate to call, email, if you have questions. These machines are the new ones are really nice. They're a little just a little smaller version, uh, a little more portable. Uh, as we hopefully get into more, um, you know, in-house classes, things like that could be a really nice uh, second machine. Uh, or if you know you're just looking to upgrade uh, from a, a smaller machine. So again, thanks for joining us. Happy Wednesday, and um, I won't see you next week. I have to go pick up a child from Chicago. So <laughs> I won't be here next week, but Jan will be here, I think. So I think. <laughs> otherwise, we'll see you later. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice day.